Okay, so let's talk about some uh, polymer chain by putting some reality, a uh, more, more realistic uh, model compared to the freely jointed chain. So in the previous lectures uh, in this channel, I talked about freely jointed chain. End-to-end -end distance square is number of bonds times bond length square. So that's what we find out. But that's the case when you have polymer carbon-carbon bonds can take any position they want. So they can they can go go like that, right? And then so they can they can do the random walk with a fixed length and they can do this uh, it's a collection of many bonds and they can do the random walk. And if you if you know your end to end distance, so this is your end to end distance, that will be the case. But let's uh, start I'll go back to our days in the organic chemistry so remember the uh, when you learn about the chain uh, the conformation and uh, so I think that you learn about the Newman projections and you can we are considering this uh, four carbon which is a butane case and then you have a first carbon second carbon third carbon and this is a case when you are in the cis position and cis what we call the uh, eclipse position and then the distance between this is 0.26 nanometers but when they are in the trans position and then it's the same plane and this length is obviously longer so I guess uh, depending on the conformation uh, where you are you are located uh, this can the distance can be really depending on uh, the, the position along this so having said that so let me let me get rid of this and this uh, there are two scenarios that we can talk about it which is a uh, freely rotating versus uh, hindered rotation so let's just say okay this one maintains a bond angle and the bond angle you can you remember that this is a theta tetrahedral bond angle that was something uh, I think is a 109.5 degrees so we can we can uh, we can know and uh, this is a essentially a fixed bond angle but they are free to rotate okay free to rotate and that's uh, what they call the um, the free rotating chain okay so they can they can just rotate and they can they can equally take there's no preferences for them to take any positions whether it is a trans or it is a eclipse or it is a staggered and you remember the the nomenclature that you learned about before but as you also know that when they kind of the rotate it right so this is a carbon 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 when they rotate it around here this rotation is actually there is a, some preferential location so this is a potential energy okay? this is a potential energy when they rotate it and this is a, essentially what is called a transposition that's the lowest energy and then when you rotate this is by, by rotating as a, as a cone here cone here and then the, they go actually higher and this is a this uh, higher position and and then then they they go to the gosh and then they go to the essentially eclipse position so in this cases they prefer this three point and this is a little like a unhappy higher energy point so you have to consider the fact that this is not not free rotation there's a certain preferences and you have to consider the fact that they 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 want to have the certain preferential so this one comes down to now is a very three simple model remember this the random walk this random walk model and where is a, this is a essentially fixed bond angle and but it is free rotation okay free to rotate And then this one is essentially they prefer those three data three points where you have a trans gosh plus and gosh minus and then then there are there are other probabilities so in terms of the potential the rotation angle so this is a this is an angle 
and then this is zero. There is no there is no preferences, right? So it is flat throughout any angles, from from zero to minus one eighty to one eighty. Whereas a hindered rotation, you will see that there's a there's a maxima where 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 they are seeing it. So they they prefer trends. They they prefer gauche minus and the gauche plus here uh, along this rotation along this uh, chain and sigma bond. So this is a carbon-carbon sigma bond. There's some preferential uh, bonding and rotation. And this is, uh, if you look at that from, from that angle, from here to that, and this is uh, what we call the, um, as you can see, this is uh, coming from the textbook. Let me make it bigger. This is a theta, or pi, okay? And uh, mathematically speaking, that what what is uh, shown up here is uh, h square is uh, n l square. That's remember for the free rotation chain. From the hindered rotation, which is there are no preferences, h square is about two times n l square. Okay. The exact formula I will show you a little bit later. Uh, for the hinder, uh, the free rotation is a two. For the hinder rotation, as you can see that if because they prefer the trans, which is a longer extended form over the others, you can see that it's actually this value is bigger than two and is approximately n proportional to three times n l squared. Uh, the exact formula for free rotation is actually can be found in the book. What they say is h square is 1 minus cosine theta, 1 plus cosine theta. And I guess they have to do the average value, but that theta is pretty much fixed at 109.5 degrees and then n l square, and this value happened to be approximately two for the case when the uh, angle bond angle is fixed as 109 degrees. That's a free rotation. And as you remember, h square is essentially one times n l square, and that is a case of uh, flexible joint. And then finally, this one, the math is a little bit more complicated, but I will just write the whole things. And this is uh, essentially 1 plus cosine theta, 1 minus cosine theta, and then multiply by let me look at the let me look at the textbook here. And that's uh, one minus cosine pi, one plus cosine pi. And that's that's an average values for, for all of them. And so this is uh, the average value. Because there is a preferences depending on the landscape. And this is also average value, but this is pretty much the fixed value, so you don't have to do the average that much. But this one multiplied by nl square, and so that's about three times nl square. So now you can see that whether uh, this is a hindered rotation. So for a given, for a given number of bonds and the fixed length of the uh, bond lengths, you can see that end-to-end -end distance looks like proportional to a constant times n l square. And whether c, as you know, c is 1 for uh, freely free joint, universal joint model. c is about 2 for free rotation, fixed bond angle and then it's about three for the hinder rotation. 
So that is uh, that will be it. And and so the now people decide to to find that okay. So as long as this one maintains this value, uh, the the scaling law h square and and then and the for sufficiently large molecular weight. So let's put uh, this symbol of infinity, and this is uh, what we call characteristic ratio. We have to just figure that out. And so to get the actual numbers, as you can see, everything depends on the how these landscape energies can be calculated. If you think about it, sometimes uh, some landscape energies can be different like this. Some of them are very deep. So depending on the uh, what's what you have attached, CH to C, sometimes um, CH3, sometimes um, if you have a CH2, CA, this is a polystyrene even bulkier, they will distort this scenario. They will distort this scenario, and then the, they're gonna uh, change the essentially what is called the average value of cosine rotation. So this value, depending on the, I guess, a rotational, hinder rotation energy uh, difference value. And typically, C infinity data is ranges from 5 to 9 value for, for many of them. And this is something that we're going to talk about later. But what's a really important message that actually is not, not characteristic ratio, uh, from all these three different cases, whether the more you are being more realistic from flexible joint to free rotation, from free rotation to the hinder rotation, what is being maintained here is size square is proportional to n to the first power, which is a molecular weight to the first power. In other words, root mean square value is square root to the n, square root to the molecular weight. So as long as you you maintain this relationship, we have a pretty good idea about the size of the polymer chain is pro not linearly, but proportional to the square value uh, uh, to the molecular weight. And that scaling loss uh, still holds uh, true. So it's m to the 0.5. That's a scaling law power.